Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I'd like to start with a quote. The ears of the leader must ring with the voices of the people. Great president once said that. Mr. President, I rise today to make it clear to everyone in this chamber exactly why I cannot support this legislation. You've heard the chants outside this chamber, not just today and last night, but many times over the past two years. Thousands of people have shown up, union and non-union, men and women, mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, even their children. These are the working families of Michigan. These are the thousands of people that I would sit here to represent. When I vote no, I'm voting no on behalf of the thousands of families. Who are you voting yes for, Grover Norquist? I know he sent you all a letter asking you to support this anti-worker legislation. You are voting yes because a handful of corporate lobbyists, a handful of fat cats in the back are telling you to. That's who you work for, the powerful few, the guys with top hats and monocles. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I work for the people, for the many. I, re I proudly represent them in casting this no vote. I'm doing what's right, what's good for the people. And I tell you this, Mr. President, we will fight you. We will not let this stand. We'll fight you from Kalamazoo to Timbuktu. We'll fight you from the streets and in the suites. We'll fight you in the pit house and we'll fight you in the outhouse. And Mr. President, I'll tell you this right now, when it's all said and done, when it's all over, we will grab the thunderbolt of truth. We will grab the rod of revolution and we will have our victory. And the spoils will go to the working people of Michigan. And you will forever remember the day when you thought you could conquer labor. You were sorely mistaken. Be prepared to engage in the fight of your life. You might win this battle, but ho, 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 the wars are brewing, sir. The wars are brewing, sir. And we're coming, and we're taking no prisoners, and we're taking no border. And Mr. President, when all said is done, working men and women of this state will reign supreme. Thank you, and I ask that my comments be printed in the journal. That's TV 33 WHVR, and you can catch us all around the world on www.tv33whpr.com. That's www.tv33whpr.com. Now, as always, we want to have a moment of silence for those who fight to protect us every day. I'm talking about our brothers and sisters, our mothers, our fathers, our uncles, our aunts, our sons, and our daughters out there on the front lines in Afghanistan, in Syria, in Iraq. We want to continue to pray for each and every one of them until they come home, as well as our boys in blue, our police, our DPD, the best and finest in the world, our Detroit Fire Department, and emergency services personnel. We love you. We appreciate you. We thank God for you. And everybody that's out there, there's anyone that's struggling or hurting, we love you and we thank you. I know I'm supposed to say this afterwards, but I'm going to make sure I get this in before we do this too. I also want to thank uh, Miss Watson for uh, sponsoring last uh, episode of The Young Effect, last month's episodes of The Young Effect. And I want to thank, um, I, I want to thank uh, Mr. Alan Taborn for uh, sponsoring this month's episodes of The Young Effect. We love you. We appreciate you guys. Please join me for a moment of silence for our fallen. All right, thank you for that. Remember, the numbers for you to call in, they're right here in the bottom of the screen. So make sure you call in with those numbers. Look, we're going to talk about the proposals today. We're going to talk about what's going on with the proposals, what the, what, and make sure that you vote in the front and the back of the ballot. Front and the back. This is important, everybody. This is your life. It's your vote. So make sure you vote in the front and the back. 
of the ballot. The front and the back of the ballot. Okay? That being said, also we want to talk about, like I said earlier, we want to talk about these proposals. I want to start off with proposal two first. That is the proposal to end gerrymandering. We got some calls. We're going to take some calls and we're going to, end, and we're going to get into these proposals. Caller, you on the air. Welcome to the Young Effect. Yeah, good afternoon. How are you? Hey, how you doing, brother? Hey, man, don't need nothing, don't want nothing. That's all right. That's all right. That's the best place to be right there. And it's a good place to be, too. Yes, sir. But you know what? In terms of the vote, also, yeah. which I haven't heard said, um, uh, ex-criminals or felons, they can also vote. That's right. I'm as glad you brought that up. Pay, like I say, as long as they pay their debt to society, they are allowed to go to that poll and cast their vote, provided that they're registered. And it almost seems like, you know, you know the, the felons, to use that word, um, they're like really forgotten when, they, when people start talking about the vote. What, well, I mean, that's on purpose. I mean, you, you got to remember prisons were retrofitted after slavery to basically house black bodies for the purposes of punishment and profit, and brown bodies as well. Uh, I also want to just say this as well. You're right about that. And if you're in jail and have been convicted, you also can vote as well. Right. So right. that's yeah. something that's important for people to know. Because a whole bunch of brothers in jail and can't get out because they, they can't afford bail, that's when you need to vote yes on one. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Yeah, because if they're waiting, if they're waiting trial, and I mean they haven't been convicted of anything. Okay, then you know they're good to go. I, and I know they have people with you know like uh, absentee, but it's too late for that to happen now. But, right. You know, they were going into the jails to find out who's in there that would be eligible to vote, but simply due to the fact that they're confined, that they're not you know allowed to get one. So, but mm -hmm. I just wanted to you know put that out in the air so in case you know some of their returning citizens uh, are watching the program and you paid your debt you can go and you can register now let me get my bid in on the three proposals go ahead okay on number on proposal one though it's going to pass i'm going to vote no but on okay two, but say on why two and three i'm going I'm, I'm dead right i'm right there i'm voting for it and also with the Wayne County Community Millage. That's right. Renewal. So. You vote yes on two, too? I'm voting yes on two, three, yeah. and the millage. Now, why are you not voting for marijuana? Tell me why. For no, no, I said no on marijuana. Yeah. Marijuana's proposal. No, why? tell me why. Tell me why. Well, I mean, to me, it's just another source of a, oh, I can't find a word right now. But Take your time. A, it's another source of some chemical, okay, that people mm -hmm. will now be allowed to go to the store and buy. And, you know, you've got these companies, they will put policy and procedure in there, mm -hmm. and this one they will add marijuana to. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, at this point, some people will become their own worst enemies because they'll say, well, it's legal, just like alcohol. Yeah, but, you know, if you want to do it on the weekend where you don't have to come in to work, all right, that's one thing. But you're going to go in there under the influence, and they give you and they give you a cup. I mean, I don't think it necessarily, you know, fire you right there. But if there's a problem, from what I can understand with these contracts, you know, they've got to offer you some treatment and that kind of thing. It, but, it, it it depends on how it is. I mean, it, it, it depends on how they test too, because they have that right. right not to be able to hire you if they want to. And I want, and that's going to be kept in the legislation. That's not changed at all. I think that's part of the uh, 1988 Drug Free Act, if I'm not mistaken. Listen, okay. let me let, let me just say this. I understand exactly where you're coming from, mm -hmm. and, and 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 that's a good place to be. That's a good thing to be worried about. I just personally believe, in terms of as far as Detroit is concerned. Um, I find it harder for us to be able to hire folks with jobs when they got criminal records. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're getting now for low-level possessions of marijuana in this state, one. Secondly, let me also say, 
Um, one out of three companies in the suburbs don't even test for opioids because okay. they said if they did, they wouldn't have no employees. So mm -hmm. I think it's kind of unfair that you would have people out in the suburbs who are making ways for folks in terms of being able to get jobs and opportunities through opioids and having the uh, much more and uh, having a lot more sensitivity and empathy in terms of getting people treatment for opioids, which is lethal which one out of 100 children abuse every day, which 57% of 12 through 17 year olds mm -hmm. abuse opioids because they got it from a friend or a neighbor or something like that, mm -hmm. that we have happening all the time that are lethal and dangerous. And there's things that are more dangerous in your medicine cabinet than marijuana, which mm -hmm. is a plant that no one has died from and no one can die from. I'm talking about actual marijuana, not the synthetic K2 and all that stuff. Right. That will be prohibited. So I understand what you're saying, and it makes a good point. And let me just say this, and I'm going to let you finish, too. Okay. Marijuana, originally, in its origins, in its mm -hmm. designs, in its engineering, was designed in order to lock up black and brown bodies. Let's make that clear. Matter of fact, Harry J. Anslinger said the reason why reefer is bad because it makes darkies feel they're equal to the white man. Mm -hmm. And so when they were passing the war, when they passed this law and the war on drugs, the war on drugs is not about criminalizing drugs. It's about criminalizing certain people who use them. And we got senior citizens who, in this, and this is where I, one of the reasons why I initially went forward with this, because I had senior citizens approach me in my district and tell me that we need to, we need to legalize marijuana because you got senior citizens who are using it for right. epilepsy, for mm -hmm. cancer, for glaucoma, mm -hmm. for, you, you know what I'm talking about, children yeah, with yeah. epilepsy. Mm -hmm. And there's one senior citizen by the name of Deborah Saltzman who was 81 years old who was arrested because her medical marijuana card expired. I just personally don't think we should be locking people up for medicine, and I personally don't think that we should keep a law on the books that was designed to lock up black and brown people simply for the fact of them being black and brown. Well, and I mean, you can I agree say what with you want right like there. And also, one more thing before we go. Go ahead. Folks, remember, you will, there will not be that box for straight party ticket voting at the top of the ballot. Right. You will have to go through and fill that oval in on every person that you want to vote for. And I would advise this. There's been a lot of slates that have been passed out, as well as what's come to your home through in your mail. Take one of those slates, and if, if it's on the, what's on that slate you like, just take that into the poll with you and, you know, and, and mark it, because I hope there's not going to be a lot of time that people are going to spend into where, you know, the lines are going to be long, which is a good thing. You know, I mean, I think, you know, those lines should be long, even with the straight party ticket voting at the top of the ticket. But you'll have to vote for every single person individually. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time. Right. I appreciate you. Thanks for you. taking the call. God bless you now. Sure. Got another caller? Hello, caller. Well, good afternoon, State Senator. Good afternoon. How are you today? I'm good. Well, I think you and Tom summed everything up. <laughs> you didn't leave nothing for me to say. Well, all right. But I would like to say one thing, is that I have some seniors over here in my neighborhood, and I'm in District 1, and... We had a little meeting yesterday, and they didn't know who to vote for. And I told them, I can't tell them who to vote for, mm -hmm. but I know who I was voting for. That's right. But they're absentee ballots. So the mailman, I got to go to the post office, and I got to report this, this, this mail person, because they don't bring the mail and they can't put their ballots out. So is there any way that I can get someone to come and pick the ballots up at their doors? I don't know. See, that's what I was telling them. That's I a good them. question. What, what, what do you mean? Like the mailman wouldn't deliver the ballots to where no, he was at? they got the ballots. But the kicker cards just kept coming. And coming and coming. Right. Then the last ones came was about the judges. 
and they didn't know anything about no judges was you know um, being on the on the ballot. Mm. But with that being said, I knew that judges were going to be on the ballot. But we just got together and we were out talking last week Wednesday, and I said, okay, well we'll just meet at my house and we'll discuss certain things Saturday, and we did. But that being said. It's 17 absentee ballots over here needs to be picked up. And if you put it in the mailbox and they don't get it, like I put mine in the mailbox three weeks ago. Oh, I see and what you're saying. they never got it. You got to, you got to, you you want somebody to pick something up and drop them off. Will the clerk even allow that? I don't know. Look. Um, That's the thing. Hey. You know what? I tell you what I'll do. Look, why don't you call look, why don't you call my office? Okay. And we'll the see if O'Connor. something can happen or not. You can leave the liaison. You got a pen with you? Yes. I I, I know how to get in contact with you. Oh, you do? Okay, good. Call call my office and let let us act as a liaison and then we'll see what's going on. Cause I think I yeah, yeah. Let 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 us act as a liaison and then uh call my office, call, talk to Jewel, and then I'll call her tomorrow. To follow up to see where you at. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, State Rep. I'm Thank State you, Senator. Appreciate you. You all have a wonderful day and give your love to my mom. You, you know I most certainly will. Okay. Bye bye. All right. Bye now. Got another caller. Caller, hello. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How you doing? You know my thing about the America, about the marijuana situation. Go ahead. If 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 you uh, yeah. Okay. What I'm what I'm trying to say is that uh, you don't have to indulge with it because if, if they legalize it, ain't nobody just like the other drugs you got it into the idea. If ain't nobody put no gun to your head, you ain't got to fool with it. Those men don't put no gun to your head. People come up with all kinds of excuses. Look, it's illegal and and it causes more accidents and get people killed and anything. If you don't drink, you don't have to fool with it. Wait, what's the problem? You, you speaking my language, man. You sound you sound you sounded too light bright, man. You know how dangerous that is when you sound too light bright around these, especially around these parts. Yeah, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. They've been smoking marijuana ever since I was fifteen and sixteen, and they still here. Back during the hippie days. But the ones who were messing around taking uh uh, this other oxycodone and this other drug mm-hmm. got out here. They OD. Percocet. Now, now you know, back when they had the crack academic twenty years ago, they didn't say nothing about the urban people's uh, uh, ODing. But yeah. when the other folks start ODing, and now it's a problem. You, I don't, you know, I don't care what kind of problem that you have. You do not have to use. Marijuana and alcohol as a scapegoat because when you sober up, the problem is still there. Brother, you have me a hello. I'm totally with you. I want to take and you on the road same, with me. I'm going to say one more thing and I'm going to let you go. Go ahead. The same thing, go ahead. The same thing uh, with the, uh, the governor's race. Yeah. Uh, Sure, sure, if the Democrat lady wins, she ain't no panel cena. She ain't going to be nothing but another Jennifer Granholm. You think if so? The, if the legislator stay uh, re- Republican, what, what is she going to do? She ain't going to do it. You, they, you, they've been talking about the car insurance for, for, for the longest. She That's ain't going to be able to do nothing about that. You think so, though, man? I mean, look, if we get the governorship and we get the House... And we get, because when Granholm was in office, I was there, and we had the House, and we had the governorship, but the Republicans controlled the Senate. And we passed some legislation reforming auto insurance, some real legislation reforming auto insurance over to the Senate, and the Republicans blocked us at every turn. At every turn. If we could take that well, see, Senate that, back. That's the problem. If we could take that, that Senate like back. all that money insurance. And the insurance coming, yeah. some kind of billion dollars is in there. That's that. true. See, that's the problem. Like you saying, if you get the house and and, and and stuff like that, but ain't no guarantee you're gonna get the house. That's true. No, that's that's very true. 
That's very true. It ain't no guarantee. Even though people start talking about a blue wave, but they saying that wave is going to be small. You right, brother. You are absolutely right. Why I mean, you get, why that's why we got to vote. Got all these black legislators and the people we do have in the House, and they know how the insurance uh, regulation is, how come they ain't got together and file suit and take it to the Supreme Court? Because Detroit had that problem, but when you go to other uh, states and cities, they don't have that problem. Well, look, take it to the Supreme Court and see if it's Constitution and, 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 and say uh, they they charging people because of their education and where they live uh, instead of going, and they credit. Uh, going uh, according to their record. So you're going to have to take it to somebody higher. That's and true. Even, even though, you, even though the, that, that Trump still got his people on there, I think all fairness, and in my opinion, take but, it to the Supreme but, Court. Yes, a little different. Well, let, well, let me say this. Now, states, it's harder for them to sue because I tried to do that multiple times with our legal counsel. And what I was told was that you got to have something called standing. And states do not have standing for that. Local youth government has standing for that. And that's why Mayor Duggan filed a lawsuit to deal with that. Now I didn't like I thought it could have been a little bit broader scope. I thought I could have you know, I thought I could have dealt more with the rate making aspects from the insurance companies and things of that nature. But I think it's a good start. You know what I'm saying? You don't want perfect to be the enemy of the good. So I thought it well, was you a know good what start. the city council need to do then? What? And I don't know if they can do it, this this is my opinion. When you when you catch a poor person driving a hoopty and they don't have insurance and even though they want to tow their car they, they, they ought to put some mandate on on the car to say, well, okay, we don't. We, it's going to cost you fifty dollars, and we're going to tow your car because we know the situation people is in. Okay, now you, if you want to give them some other kind of ticket, it's, up, it, 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 it's, it's ways that that you can do things. Even though the insurance is high, they, uh, the, the, these politicians we put in office ought to learn how to com compromise with each other then. Yeah, I agree with you. Well, look, 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 that, look, compromise in the air. You got Bill Shooty talking about auto insurance reform. I ain't never heard Bill Shooty say auto or insurance in the same sentence. My whole entire eight years, I done been up there in, in the Senate. And, you know, he was Shooty wasn't on duty on that one. So, I mean, look, I totally understand what you're saying, brother. I think those are good ideas. I think the next legislature will look into that. So I appreciate you, brother. In the state of Michigan, when you got the big three here, they ought to try to get involved with the auto. Uh, they ought to speak their opinion about the auto situation and showing situation too, because that that take effects that they that they car well, sale. Well, you know that's a good point, brother. And there is a task force with like the mayor and uh, I think the big three and with DTE and some other major corporate titans that are in uh, the city. Uh, and they are talking about auto insurance. I think they, I think they formed maybe a year. Uh, I think they formed two years ago, 2016. Uh, I, I think they had one of their meetings in Mackinac, if I'm not mistaken. So they, there are four, there are groups like that that are formally trying to deal with auto insurance reform. So again, you right, you 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 hitting the nose right in the head, brother. All right, thanks a lot, brother. Thank Just you. Appreciate you. Are you hitting it right in the head? We got another caller. Space Standard Tommy Young. Hey, what's How going you on, doing, brother? What's up? I'm a returning citizen, and I've been home three years, and I've been voting every time I get a chance to vote. So you absolutely correct. Once you uh, are released back into society, you definitely can vote. Now, yeah. dealing with inside the jails and the prisons, I, I have not seen that. Now, I'm not. I know for a fact in the prisons you cannot vote. While you in there now, while you incarcerated, I don't think you can exercise that. No, you can't. Not while you car so, No, but if you in jail, you supposed to be able. Let, let me say this: legally, you supposed to be able to vote. Now we all know that sometimes what you have the right to do and what they actually allow you to do once you yeah. get in that system are two totally different things. Exactly, because while, while you're in jail, you are innocent of their prison guilty, so you should be able to exercise right. your franchise. What they so should be treating not, you with and what they actually doing to you right. is two different things. Yeah, that's that's not that's not the case, but, you know, I can ask a few people that may 
have just left the county jail or anything like that to find out if they're actually allowing them to vote. But from my recollection, they don't allow you to vote, period, while you are in the Well, period. look, let me say this, man. The clerk sends their people or the clerk sends their people in there. Mm -hmm. Into the jails for that. Now I don't know like what the system is or how it's set up in terms of how they allow folks in there. I mean, and, and, you know, and you see, I don't want to be assuming about your experience, brother. But you know what I'm saying. But I mean, but I'm assuming you know or know people who understand how that system work. You know, in terms yeah. of communications and who they let in there. And you know, prison jails are usually very sensitive about who they let in there and what they yeah. let in there. Usually they don't let cameras and things in there. In there, so you know what I'm saying. Yeah. They're real sensitive about all that. So, yeah. but they supposed to, from my understanding, the clerk sends people up in there. Now, they're what happens afterwards, I don't know. But they don't. They don't. Okay. But, uh, another issue you was talking about, the, the legalizing the marijuana. I would rather for them to put prohibition on tobacco and legalize marijuana. Tobacco is more harmful physically mm -hmm. to the anatomy. It than is. is. I think it's got to. And when you look at alcohol, you can look at the, the death rate with mm -hmm. alcohol abuse. Well, look, I think it's got like marijuana, alcohol got like a 32% dependency use rate. Mm -hmm. Whereas mm -hmm. I think marijuana is like 9% dependency. Caffeine is more addictive to marijuana. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm not saying that you can't be addicted to marijuana. You can be. But uh, it's not as dependent as tobacco is. Tobacco is right. more dependent because of nicotine and it's more dangerous, you know, because of all the cancers dangerous. that it causes. Marijuana does, yeah. is not associated with cancers, no, uh, I mean, according to Keeley University. So. And we talk about the roads, the infrastructure in the state of Michigan, and not just the roads, the water in Flint, Michigan, and arguably Jackson, Michigan, and St. Louis, Michigan as well. People think that Michigan Speak up a little bit. I can't hear you, man. Huh? Speak up. There you go. Speak up a little bit. I can't hear you. A lot of people are focusing on Flint, Michigan, and they got a situation. And we got other municipalities in this state that also have water issues like St. Louis, Michigan. Yeah. If you believe in St. Louis, Michigan, and the lawsuit that has been filed for St. Louis, Michigan, you will see that the water has been filled in St. Louis, Michigan for years, as well as Jackson, Michigan. So it's like, you know, they just take this tax revenue from the legalizing of marijuana, and they can work on the infrastructure in the city yeah. or in the state of Michigan. Preferably the city of Detroit when you're talking about the road. Because not only is, 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 is um, the road, is, well, the insurance killing us, because the insurance is like having another tunnel. You know, and God forbid if you got a car note, so you got two car notes. You got to pay your insurance if you still live in the city of Detroit. That's about three hundred dollars a month, and then you can't owe five hundred dollars for your your car your, your car note. So when we look at the the, the the tax revenue that could be generated from the legalizing of marijuana, we definitely can cut down on me having to pay uh, four hundred dollars a year on tires just because I'm I'm hitting potholes. So we, we got to look at and be it. Listen, I agree. It's five hundred twenty million dollars over seven years. You could use that money. You know, you yeah. use that money for roads. You use that money yeah. for all kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, look, they say that the amount of money it would take for us to fix the infrastructure for the water in our school system, because you know you mm -hmm. got kids who can't drink the water because of lead's in that. They saying right. it's five hundred million dollars. You could take one, all that money and drop it. And to the school, even though the proposal says it's twenty million dollars of it will first go to PSTD, PTSD research for the first two years of legalization, mm -hmm. but afterwards you could take that all the rest of that five hundred twenty-seven million dollars and drop that into the school system to fix the water system, so these kids uh, can have some uh, water to be able to drink. You know, shout out to uh, Dr. VD. I just met him a couple days ago. You know, when we were talking about you know. Um, the infrastructure of DPS and how we're going to fix it and how much money you need. Cause I'm trying to talk to the chairman of appropriations to get that done. So yeah, man, I, 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 I totally agree with you. You got, you got the revenue aspect and you got the money that we saving from locking people up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. These state, you know, these, these prisons and these jails, you know what I mean? You know, you have that. You also going to have arrest rates that are going to go down. So there's just mm -hmm. a lot of positives from this in terms of why we need to have legalization as well as allowing the government to be able to really study, you know, medical marijuana, particularly CBD, you know, in terms of what, how we could use that in terms of treating chronic pain and fibromyalgia and uh, leukemia. They talking about using it for uh, PTSD and autism, you know what I'm saying, as well as glaucoma. Yeah. 
glaucoma and cancer. So there's a lot of different things that we could use, as well as uh, CTE for football players as excessive concussion syndrome. So we could mm-hmm. use that. I think that would be a real good thing overall for a long period of time. So, But, you know, when you look at, uh, Senator Cumbia, when you look at the fact that you, 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 you look at, you do the study of all the states that has legalized marijuana. Yeah, nine now, plus Canada got smart. Canada got smart. And they say we're going to legalize it across the board. So when we look at, when we actually look at the tax revenue that is being spent mm. versus the tax revenue that is being earned from locking people up from selling marijuana, the, the citizens is getting dropped 20 fold because you, they got to pay for these people to be housed while they're incarcerated for being in possession of marijuana versus the tax revenue that's going to be going into the pot for the taxation of legalizing marijuana. So yeah. It's so it makes more Speak sense up a little bit, man. It, it makes more sense to legalize marijuana and generate the tax revenue than to keep it in the pot. I can't hear you, man. Speak up a little bit. Speak into the mic a little bit for me. I can't hear you. No, what I was saying is it seems as though. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I said it seems as though it would be the smart money is on taxing the marijuana versus taking the tax money from the citizens to house people who are in, in, in possession of marijuana. I, I totally agree with you. 110%, brother. Well, listen, I just want to say thank you for this call, man. Appreciate you, brother. All right. Appreciate you too, bro. Keep doing what you do. Yeah, I will. Most certainly will. Thank you for it, man. Love you, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you for the call. We got another caller? Hello? Yes, good afternoon. Hey, what's going on? Real good. Okay, first of all, everybody get out and vote. Make sure you get out and vote. Don't let the rain snow or nothing. Hold you up. Get up and vote. Look at the back of the ballot. Vote on them judges. And all those proposals. Right, vote the judges. Yes, on all three proposals. That's, That's right. Make sure you vote on the back. The proposal, vote yes for all of them. Make sure that that community talk continue because we really need that. That's not, a, not an increase in your tax. Now, the young man just got off the phone. I asked a question on welfare rights the other night about the prisoners in jail. And then uh, you... You sort of answered it to me, but you know, if you're not, uh, I got, I can't think. Of it, but if you just in jail waiting the trial or something like that, and you have you know, whatever, do you have a right to vote? An idea, who takes those votes to them? If if I got an absentee vote at my house with your name on it, and you locked up in jail waiting, and I take that to you. From my understanding, that, and how does that work? And when do they let the people know? Cause we think they did. I'm gonna hang up and listen to your response. Okay. Thank you. No, thank you for your call. From my understanding, the clerk goes in and does that. They they send somebody's office in there to the jails, and they allow them to vote. And then once they allow them to vote, they take they either they either allow the jail to mail it back to them, or they pick up those votes and they take it back to them themselves. That's that's basically what I I would assume. How that works? I don't know if they've let. I don't know if they vote under supervision, or if they respect their secret ballot rights and do. I don't know how that works in terms of what that relationship is. But it's either they let them vote and they mail it back, or they collect all the ballots then and take them back with them. So I mean, but that's but that's something between the relationship between the city clerk and the jails, from my understanding. So I appreciate your call, brother. Love you, man. We got another caller. Hey, caller, you on the air? Welcome to the Young Effect. Happy Sunday. Thank you. Happy Sunday, Gordis. How you doing? All right. Uh, yes, on all the proposals. Free the weed and work on redlining. Yes. Redlining been existing longer, as long as the so-called plant that's naturally grown. That's right. And now it's about to be too legit to quit. Hey. And you people are so, black folks especially, are trained brains to demonize something while we demonizing Others are capitalizing. Absolutely. Get in the game, become the industry, create the jobs, and take care of your community and fight against these draconian laws yes. that's made to set up from the get up. Yes. Now, we already know about the Fed. If you educate to liberate, you'll know how to get around that just like 
every other group does. Yes. And like I said, you demonizing and everybody else is capitalizing. There's a way to make money in this industry where you don't even have to touch it. You can advertise. You could uh, sell uh, products that would mm-hmm. help the uh, growers. So it's, it's so many ways Glass that you can work. make money in this industry that you don't even have to touch it. Mm, so, and they're, those they're who are so worried nice. about the feds, mm-hmm. learn the laws, educate to liberate. Yeah, they true. said it was illegal for you to uh, learn how to read, and they still trying to capitalize on that mm-hmm. law now. Make well. it, uh, throwing monkey wrenches in the way to say our children that there's no effort or concern if our children should learn how to read. Mm-hmm. So they dumb us down purposely. And then these little, uh, what I call pool pimps, the pool pimps, they talking about this issue, but they ain't talking about the illegal foreclosures, the redlining, mm. the water shut off. Mm. But you talking about a plant that's naturally grown mm. by God. Don't, thank don't. you taking my car. Love that's you. All. Thank you. Don't be hitting the pastors like that. Don't hit the men of God like that. You're going to mess around and get hit by lightning you walk outside. Don't want to be cursed up in here. Got another caller. Hello, caller. Good afternoon, son. Hey, how you doing? Fine, and you? Good. Always good to hear your voice. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, anyway, I had a call behind Sylvia. Yeah. I, I agree everything she's saying, but... The average young black person that likes to smoke marijuana mm-hmm. is not going to be out here trying, trying to own no business. Now, that's why and I, I smoked cigarettes for 38 years, and they say you can't smoke on a job, so I had to smoke outside, or, mm-hmm. so I didn't smoke at my job here. Mm-hmm. And I feel, okay, they know, they stand. They would, they, they would not hire you if you fail a drug test for marijuana. But I can't understand why they just don't stop smoking with marijuana if it's in their system. That's what uh, that's, I probably would be out with the, with the marijuana a lot of this going on. I know if it's causing me to try and get a, a good job, they say I can't, I can't get the job if I smoke marijuana. I say forget that there marijuana. Mm-hmm. That's the problem. I can't see where they don't stop smoking marijuana. Mm-hmm. Well, li- well, 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 well. Listen, let me let me say it like this, because uh, cause basically, I understand what you're saying. Um, I think that the like like I said earlier, and maybe I misheard you, and if I did, correct me. Because it seems like you say you got a problem with people who are smoking marijuana being able to get jobs, right? That's not what she said. What did she say? Right. I, no, that is. That is I, I said that if they said that they won't get hired for a, for a job, certain job, if they fail to fill a marijuana te- test, I can't stand why they won't stop just smoke, stop smoking the marijuana. Oh, I you see. You want to get paid, pay good money? Oh, I see what you say. They know that. No, most of the ones like that, they they're not trying to be no get their own business, you no know, trying to be an entrepreneur or anything. They're trying to get them a job. I see what you're saying. You say it's just instead of instead of locking people up for it, just get, just help them to stop smoking it. Right. That's that makes too. perfect sense. I totally yeah. agree with you. One hundred. Yeah. I'm sorry. I misheard you. I knew I misheard you. I yeah. I, I, I I totally agree with you. One hundred ten percent. That's what treatment facilities and things of that nature are for. I totally agree with you. And, it, and as far as terms of small business, you're absolutely right. Most of these young folks are not, you know, most of these brothers are not into getting into the medical marijuana, marijuana industry. I do believe, though, that we should have partnerships between uh, uh, local government or state government and, you know, and uh, the industry to be able to allow people to get the capital necessary to be able to start their own marijuana businesses if they want. And we mm-hmm. should do like Oakland did where they set aside 50% of the licenses 
for people who were victims of the war on drugs so they could be able to get into these businesses so that way you can have like you know you can have like a compact so to speak where you have the financial industry you have the government and you actually have the businesses that are all coming together maybe like business incubators for cannabis and things of that nature i think they got the cannabis expo that i think i don't know if it's still going on but right over there in kobo now and so I think that we should be able to get involved in that because you're right. Cannabis owners make up, cannabis industry business owners who are African American only make up like 1% of the entire industry. Mm-hmm. Black folks make up only 1% of the time people who own cannabis operations. So I, 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 I totally agree with you 110% what you said earlier to tell people stop smoking because that's exactly what they're doing with opioids. And they way more powerful out there in the suburbs. I mean, you got they got fentanyl, which is fifty percent, uh, fifty times more powerful than heroin. And the FDA just released another drug that's more powerful than fentanyl. Right. So it's you. You totally right about that. I agree with you one hundred and ten percent. Okay. Have a nice weekend. You too. Thank you for your call. We got another caller. Hey, caller. What's going on? Hey, Coleman. Hey. It's Asia. Hey, Asia. Good hey. to hear from you. I thought that was you, and you look real good uh, when I saw you. I wouldn't say it more to you, but, you know, I was in the zone because I knew it was going to be intense what I was talking about, and so, you know, sometimes I was black out, and I don't really. Yeah, I I, I, I know exactly what you were talking about. Engaged that's like why, that, but, yeah. That's why I spoke up and stated I appreciate that it. you knew what you were talking about. Um, I just wanted to state this. The Charter Commission, do not forget to vote. Yes. The people slate. The people slate on Tuesday. That is the city's constitution. And our rights are on the line. But with those candidates, it's 16 people running, it's nine seats. If you get five or six seats being held by the people, for the people, that one slate, which is the people's slate, will be the ones Mm -hmm. that keep our power, the people's power um, on top. All right. Instead of having corporations and donors and all of those people, the gentrifiers and stuff, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, on there. Because I know you've seen a lot of mailbox candidates. (laughs) So please (laughs) vote for the people's slate. The people's slate. Can I give endorsements or no? <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I like a lot of people there. The people's slate. I think there's one person that's missing on there that I like too, and it's uh, Miss Peters. That's all there. Miss Peters awesome. is on there. Oh, she's on there too. Tracy yes. Peters. Yeah, because it, 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 it's Tracy Peters. Tracy is Peters. On there. She sure is. Nicole. And then, oh, oh no, oh no, I'm thinking of Wanda Black. That's what I'm thinking of. Who I also like. Oh, okay. Right that. Well, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking of Wanda Black. Okay, okay, yeah. I, 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 I think I saw something like that. But no, those are those are good folks. I mean, I went Wanda Black too. But those are good folks. I don't have no problem. So okay. I'm not. I'm not All I'm, right. I'm not so hitting, no, no, I'm no, gonna no, give no. Go ahead, and make your endorse. I mean, I, I think I think it's a good thing. I, I I'll put my rubber stamp on it. You got it. Okay. So Joanna Underwood. Yeah. She's a fighter. She's she, a, con- a continuous fighter. She's, she's good. Um, she's for the people. Yeah. Uh, she focused main, mainly on housing, uh, tax foreclosures, water shutoff, and a lot of other different things that, you know, we're going through in the city of Detroit. Just go through the names for me so everybody will okay. know. We got go, a little Nicole bit of Nicole Small. Okay. Miss Tracy Peters. Yes. Um, Taylor Harrell. Yes. Did you hear me? Taylor Harrell? Yes, Taylor Harrell. Yes. Okay, uh, Denzel McCampbell. Okay. Um, uh, Miss Barb, Miss Barbara Ann. All right. 
Okay, and it's another one. Uh, I'm missing somebody. Missing somebody? Yeah, I'm missing somebody. Well, look, if you find a call back, and you find on call back, we re and we say that name too. Okay. All right? All right. All right. Remember to vote for the people's slate. That's the most important. Remember to vote, vote, for, people's slate. vote for the people's slate. All right. All right. Love Thank you, now. you. Take care now. Love you, Asia. Appreciate you. Love you, too. That's my youth coordinator, everybody. Love her. Appreciate her. We got another caller. Hello, caller. Belinda Underwood. Belinda Underwood. So okay. My, my, my name is Belinda Underwood. Belinda Underwood, yes, we got it. And I was, turn your TV down. I'm gonna do you, do you want me to turn my TV down? Yeah. Yeah. I'll turn my TV down. Excellent. Salam alaikum, my brother. Alaikum salam. How you doing, sister? Peace be upon you. I was just calling because I love WHPR Detroit Live, and I'm looking at you. Excellent. And I just need a blessing. Do you get a blessing? Okay. What you need a blessing for? I need God to bless me to make me stop drinking beer. Okay. Well, listen, we will definitely keep you in our prayers. We hope that God touches you from the bottom, top of your head to the bottom of your feet to help you to stop drinking beer. Okay? Yes, sir. All right, we love you. We appreciate you. Thank you, Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. Love you, gorgeous. You take care now. Get another caller. Okay, so look, I'm just going to go over this real quick. We got three proposals. The first proposal on the ballot is the uh, proposal to legalize marijuana or legalize cannabis. There's over 20,000 arrests in Michigan. And 70% of those are for low-level defenses and possession. Legalization is the way to go. Now, some will talk to you about decriminalization, meaning that if you got a low level, if you got pot in your hand and it's low level for pot, or if you got like a small amount of marijuana on you, you'll get a ticket and you won't go to jail. But what they're not telling you is that for intent to distribute, you will go to jail. Or to sell it or to buy it, you will go to jail. So what's going to happen is the arrest is going to shift from possession, which is going to be a long line around 36th District Court in order for you to pay your tickets. So basically what they do when they make it possession, the new driver's responsibility fee. And then they're still going to be locking folks up for distribution. So they don't get you with a ticket for possession. They're going to get you for locking you up for distribution. And we got to remember, in America, African Americans are 12 times more likely to be wrongfully convicted for a drug crime. So you're going to have a whole bunch of brothers and sisters who are going to all of a sudden be drug dealers. Most of them are coming from poor communities. They're going to be given a lawyer who can't remember their first name. They're going to be a public defender. They're going to go to court. And more than likely, they're going to go to jail for the mandatory minimum. Help me, somebody. And we're going to continue this mass incarceration, this hyper-incarceration system that we currently living in. Enough's enough. In the words of the great and Ivory Calvert, bring our boys and girls home. We want jobs and not jails. I'd rather be, and you know, some people talking about, well, you know, most black folks don't be getting the job. Look, I would rather we be fighting about who get the jobs and fighting about how much money we got and where it goes than be sitting around looking at a crying mother because her son about to be sent up state for having for selling fifteen dollars worth of weed he doing 15 20 something years enough is enough of that and when you go across these other states like colorado and washington the arrest rates overall for african americans are down the discrepancy still exists so the amount of times which black people are arrested is still higher than their white counterparts. But the overall arrest rate, the amount of times they get arrested, is down. And also, uh, clearance rates for, for uh, murders and other more violent crimes are up. That means they're solving these cases. 
And we all know in the city of Detroit, there's a lot of cases that we could be solving. I'm not knocking uh, Chief Craig. I know they're doing a good job in terms of having a much higher clearance rate they had before he got there. I was just saying, I just believe they could use their resources in a much more efficient and effective manner and go out to people who are actually committing murders and robberies and aggravated assaults and things of that nature rather than going at the people who are smoking marijuana that's safer than all the other drugs out there that's legal currently and has medical benefits that alcohol and tobacco don't have and ain't trying to have. Come on, somebody. I'm sorry, I feel like Joy, feel like Joy and Watson right now. Come on. Come on now. You know what I'm saying is true. Look. look no, I don't want to say wake up Detroit. I'm, I'm going to get hit with that copyright. Look. Uh, Tuesday... 313-623-0066. 313-626-0066. For free Uber and Lyft rides to the polls. So if you want to go to the poll, Uber and Lyft, call 313-626-0066. That's 313 626 Zero zero six is for free, free. I said free. Uber and Lyft rides to the polls. Three one three six two six zero zero six six for free. Uber and Lyft rides to the polls. So they got ride sharing services. They're available for free to the polls. So exercise your franchise. Take your soul to the poll because too many people have died for our right to vote in this great country called the U.S. of A. We have the caller. Hello, caller. Hello? Uh, yeah, so I'll just take a, a second that you say happy birthday. Thank you. Hey, hey Mr. McLeod, how you doing? Thank you, sir. Oh, I'm doing uh, everything good. Everything is fine. Good. And I uh, tell the mother I'm uh, still waiting for I'm uh, still ready for her uh, uh, music to come out. Well, you gonna get ready to tell her Hi, yourself really? in a couple minutes. How are you? I love you. Yeah, you know she's not I, far behind. I love you too. <laughs> okay. uh, the the best team in TV. Okay. Uh, Coleman and Ed Ivory. That's right. Well, look, I love you, brother. I appreciate you. Okay, I'll take care. Take care now. You got you got a call. You got another call. A call. Hello. Yeah, quickly, I want to say I agree with the young lady to uh, vote the People's Choice on the charter. You guys have got to start creating your own jobs, get in mm -hmm. the game, get in the industry, and be power economics and take care of your own community. That's right. Therefore, you can make the laws to work for you instead of allowing it to work against you. Thank you for taking my call. Thank you for taking And I just want to say this real tip, since you're talking about uh, power economics, you're on that Claude Anderson tip. I just want to say this. Look, I don't see why people are saying that African town is racist. It's not. You got Cork town, you got Greek town, you got Mexican town. We, you know, you had Asian town. You know, we need to bring that back. And we had Chaldean town. I think that still there was kind of smaller than it once was. If we could have all these other towns and there's nothing wrong with that, we should have that and that adds to our culture. I don't know why we can't monetize African culture and be able to bring that to city of Detroit. We just want what everybody else got. I don't know why we can't do that. And I don't know why cannabis can't be a part of that. So we need to vote for that. Also, proposal two, real simple. Proposal two is basically about gerrymandering. So people are drawing up their lines to favor the power that's in party, the, the, the party that's in power. So basically, let me say it to you like this. You got politicians who are picking their voters instead of the voters who are picking their politicians. Now, look, I, used to, I have been a part of this process, and I'm going to tell you right now, it is one of the most political and one of the most cynical processes I have ever been in. This, it, was, it represented the low point of my career. I would not want to go through that process again. That is not something that should be happening. You drawing up districts based on your own political survival and advantage rather than what's better for the constituents which you're supposed to be serving. That is not how that's supposed to happen, and that's not why I got elected. That's why my district goes all the way from Alter to Gibraltar. Now, they allow, now, some districts are different because they, they allowed us to be able to draw our own districts in Detroit because we're so heavily Democratic. 
as long as we didn't try to go across, you know, uh, other county lines, as long as we stayed within Wayne County. But I, 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 I'm going I'm to tell you, man, it was not a good process. So we need to vote yes on two. We need to have an independent commission be able to solve that and figure that out. That should be done for what's best for the people, not best for what's politicians. And I, I'm, I'm telling you, it was one of the worst processes I have been in in my career. And that's saying something. Uh, proposal three is we should vote for that too. That's basically just about ensuring that it makes it easier to be able to vote, that you uh, have no reason absentee ballots. You know, you go in there, you got to have a reason why you can't be at the polls. Now I'm saying you have no reason at all. You want to vote absentee, you can vote absentee. It's also going to have election audits so we don't have the issue that we had in 2016 with ballots not being counted, ballots still being in machines. So we have more transparency and more accountability in that regard. These are things that we need to do. We need to make it easier to be able to vote, not harder. We need to make we need to get rid of voter suppression. You know what I'm saying? Not continue it and encourage it. So these are things that we're gonna do. Also remember, like I said, like they said before, you cannot vote a uh, straight party ticket. That is off the ballot. So make sure that you go down the line and vote every single person and you flip the ballot over. Don't just vote for one side. Flip the ballot over and vote for the entire ballot. I hope this will help you on all the issues. I'm voting yes on all three. I vote yes to legalize marijuana. I vote yes on um, proposal two, which is uh, the gerrymandering proposal, anti-gerrymandering proposal, and I vote yes on three. So I'm Coleman Alexander Young II. Remember, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Uh, 313-626-0066 for free Uber and Lyft rides to the polls. Remember, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. I'm your state senator, Coleman Alexander Young II. I think your chance is up next. Love you. God bless you. Bye.